Hey guys, it's Grace Carter here and JW Anderson has sent me the questions that you sent in for me to answer. So, I'm sorry if I'm looking down, my computer is on my lap. So the first question is, which artists have most influenced your music? And if you can meet one of them, who would it be? This is a great question. Um, there's lots of artists that have influenced me. I think that's part of being an artist, is just having loads of influences. I have a picture of Nina Simone in my spare room that I have opposite my keyboard, which gives me inspiration sometimes. Um, so I love her. I love Lauren Hill um, a lot. I used to listen to her a lot with my mum in the car growing up. Um, and then Alicia Keys is probably the one person I'd love to meet just because I remember just finding her and listening to her for the first time when I was super young and really relating to her and feeling quite fascinated by her confidence to express emotion and I definitely I'd hope that that has come through in my own music because a lot of my music's very emotionally driven and yeah so I would love to meet her and write a song with her I think that'd be really fun <laughs> and it would be very emotional the second question is you grew up in Brighton what was this music scene like and how did it influence your music um I did grow up in Brighton from the age of eight or nine um, and it influenced me in the sense that I think moving from North West London to Brighton or Hove, which is extremely white <laughs> and I'm obviously mixed race and I grew up with a single mum who didn't look like me. Um, and moving there, I had lots of questions and I felt quite different. And I think that's where music came in because that's, it was my outlet and it was my way of processing and, and kind of dealing with things that I was feeling. So. Yes, I think that's how it influenced my music, as it was a place where I started making music. Um, and the music scene in Brighton is really cool. There's so many different genres of music. There's so many different like venues catering for different types of music. Um, and I, I think now I realize how lucky I was that I got to play in so many places at such a young age. Like I definitely shouldn't have been in those rooms because I was like a kid still, but <laughs> thank you to the promoters that had me. Um, so that was really cool. And yeah, my last show that I did in Brighton was at a venue called Patterns. I don't think, or was it Patterns? Yeah, it was Patterns and it was curated by a local band called Normanton Street who were great. And it was me, this artist called Celeste. Um, Normanton Street and I remember coming off stage and my mum being like there's this guy at the back this really tall guy and he's cheering you on do you know him and I was like oh no I don't think I know him and I went up to him and it was Rag and Bone Man and he was just blowing up at the time and he was like that was really good and then a year later he took me around on tour around Europe and that was pretty cool so I definitely think there's like a, a tightness and unity between Brighton artists um, yeah so it's pretty cool. Um, how do you stay motivated? I go through stages with this, especially in isolation. <laughs> um, I think the main thing for me that I kind of realized pretty early on is that I need to get up, like actually up, have a shower. Not that I don't shower every day, I do shower every day. But get up, have a shower, do my hair, get dressed properly and not back into my pajamas um and maybe put some makeup on if i feel like it or if i've got to film something or do something do something um but the main thing is i need to get up and get ready because if i don't do that then i'm just gonna be like in my sleep state all day and it's just not gonna be a vibe so do that and then also in the past kind of week or so i've started doing to-do lists because I mean, I've been feeling really inspired and creative at the moment, which is very exciting because I definitely went through a phase of not feeling those two things. Um, and I, it feels like there's not enough hours in the day a lot of the time. So <laughs> if I make a to-do list, it means that I can get on with all the things I want to get on with and I don't forget. So yeah, that's another way of staying motivated. So that's two ways. What is your favourite place that you have travelled to? Um... I have a lot of places that I've loved traveling to. There's like the last three years since I released my first song, I've got to go to so many incredible places and I'm very aware now, especially not being able to travel, that how lucky I've been. Um, but I think there's two standouts for me. I went and toured Asia in summer last year. And we went to Tokyo, Osaka, then we went to Korea, and we went to Seoul in Korea. Um, and then Bali, which was insane, so nice. I couldn't believe I was doing like 
a show in Bali. <laughs> um, so that was really cool. Um, I had my first headline show in Seoul, which I thought no one would turn up to because I'd never been to Korea before, didn't know people listened to my music. And I remember my boyfriend and my manager coming upstairs and being like, I don't know why you're worried, like the room's full. And I was like, what? So that was really cool. That was a big memory. Um, sorry, I just kicked my phone. Um, and then in 2018, I went to Pristina in Kosovo um, for Sunny Hill Festival, which is Dua Lipa and her family's festival. And it was such an honor to go with them and, and just be in a place where not many people go and perform. And it, it just meant that everyone was so excited to have you there, even if they'd never heard of you before. Like, I remember going on stage and there was 10,000 people, everyone shining the torches on their phone, everyone screaming, cheering. And it was my first experience of like really feeling accepted on stage. Um, and yeah, it was super, super cool. So that's a big memory too. And that's one of my favorite places I've traveled to. And I hope to go back soon. Um, what are you most excited for once quarantine is over? Everything, having my life back. <laughs> um, no, I'm excited about seeing my mum who's in Brighton. We don't, I'm quarantined in London in my flat. Um, so seeing my mum, seeing my friends who are like my family, um, I miss them a lot. Being able to tour again, being able to do a show, I miss being on stage so much. I was on tour when this all started going down and we had to cut it short, which was heartbreaking, but for, for good reason. Um, but I hope I get to finish that at some point soon because I love being on tour and I love performing to people that sing my songs back at me every night. That's pretty cool. Um, any tips for emerging singers and songwriters? Yes, the main tip from me is just try and be as self-sufficient as possible. Don't wait for other people to come into your life and space to help you do stuff. Like there's so much you can do on your own. I remember getting Logic on my computer when I was like 14 or 15 <clears throat> and learning how to produce and learning how to record myself to an extent, like it didn't sound incredible, but I found like the presets and the plugins that I liked using and I would make things that I could then send to people. And when I saw my publishing deal, when I met my publishers, I all the demos I had, had, I'd never written with anyone before. They were all things that I'd done on my own. So that was pretty cool. And I definitely say, yeah, be self-sufficient. There's so much you can do on your own, especially now, we're in 2020. There's so many different things you can do. Like, just try and be creative. Um, and then the second thing is just don't compare yourself to other people. You can waste so much time and energy looking at what other people do. And, and stressing yourself out and I've learned the hard way <laughs> I think we all have learned the hard way we all do it it's only human but just try not to compare yourself there's no point you are you for a reason you can't be anyone else so just be the best version of yourself yes <laughs> um what is your favorite outfit or item from JW Anderson hmm I think I have a couple I think my main one is when I did the, so I went to the London store opening um, and I did the British Vogue takeover. And when me and my stylist went for the fitting, I tried, I was trying on like dresses and stuff and dresses aren't really my thing, but I was obsessed with these dresses. Um, and then I tried on this structured suit that was incredible. I felt so confident in it. I felt amazing in it. And I was like, oh, but it needs like something else. And we put one of the gold bras from the dresses under the suit and I mean, I just felt a hundred million pounds, dollars. Um, and yeah, I just felt amazing. And so I loved that gold bra and I really want to get myself one because it just like spices up an outfit, you know? Um, so that, and then also I, at the fitting for the store opening, I got a gift, which was the key ring, and I think we all know what the key ring is. I remember my stylist um, back in the day used to wear this key ring on his trousers every day, and I was like, where's that from? It's the blue, it's a penis. <laughs> um, and I was like, where's that from? That's so funny. And then they gave me one, a blue one. Um, and it's just like, helps me start conversation. It's like a good conversation starter. People are like, what is that? And I'm like, exactly what you think it is. How are you? <laughs> we have a chat. Um, but I do hide it when I come back to my flat because I just worry that my neighbors, I don't know. I, I just don't wanna have that conversation. So I put it up my sleeve. <laughs> anyway, um, the next question is, what are the things that make you happy? 
so many things. And I think this time and being locked in and having all this time to reflect has made me realize that there are so many amazing, incredible things in my life that bring me happiness and joy. Um, that being my friends, my family, the fact that I get to do what I love every day <laughs> and get to tour and be in the studio and write songs with my friends and, and do all these things. I'm just so grateful that I get to do all of it. And so there's a lot of things that make me happy and I'm very lucky for the life that I have. And I think this time has made me realize that, which is very cool. Um, and then the last question is, if you could only listen to two albums for the rest of your life, what would they be? So, this is a really hard question <laughs> because I like, obviously I like music, but there are so many that I love. I think The Miseducation of Lauryn Hill is a pretty epic album. I think it's an album of a generation and has been a big thing for a lot of people. And I just remember have so many memories, like sat in the car with my mum growing up, singing like every word to that thing. And just like, just learning all the words. The yeah, it was just amazing. So that album, and then also, Eight Weights and Heartbreak, Kanye West. That album sonically just is incredible, I think that changed music in a lot of ways too and has inspired a lot of artists and it has inspired a lot of things that you hear now. So I love that album a lot. And um, it's probably a less expected one from me, but yeah, that's also a favorite. And that I think is the end of all of the questions. <gasps> I just broke my laptop. <laughs> um, but yeah, thank you so much for asking me the questions and thank you JW Anderson for having me. It's been a pleasure and I hope everyone is staying safe, healthy and relatively sane. So yeah, I will see you soon. Lots of love. Bye.